action. and welcome to Edinburgh Fest Live. I'm Abby Roberts, I'm your host, and we're coming all the way from the glittering Newtown Theatre on George Street in Edinburgh. We've got a fantastic audience, they're raring to go. I've just met them earlier, they're all wonderful. And we've got some of the very best uh, of the fest coming up for you. Uh, before we get the show underway, I would like to ask uh, viewers at home a little question that you can tweet your answer in. What was the estimated cost of the Edinburgh tram system? You can tweet that answer in. I'll ask that question again. What was the estimated cost of the Edinburgh tram system? As a clue, it was a fuck of a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> and there should have been a revolution. But anyway, let's not get sidetracked by politics. Uh, so you can tweet your answers in to at edfest underscore live. And if you've missed any of the previous programmes, we've had fa some fantastic guests, you can go to the YouTube channel. Oh, so said boob. Let's just do that again. You can go to the BoobTube channel. <laughs> you can go to the YouTube channel uh, and search for SBC, which is Showbiz Channel, Edinburgh Fest Live. So if you've just joined the programme, you've missed a stellar cast of guests we've had on for the uh, first three shows. We even have our very own TV chef. You've heard of Mary Berry, Nigella Lawson, with all her, oh, look at my avocados on toast. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. You've heard of Jamie Oliver, oh, Gertrude, Gertrude, all right, darling. We have got our own resident TV chef, and her name is Harry Mary. <laughs> And as you can hear from our audience reaction, they're very much looking forward to Harry Mary. That's it. Very excited. We've got fantastic stand-ups, one of my favourite stand-ups, Taylor Glenn, who's wonderful. We've got stand-up from Daniel Nils Roberts. We've got uh, a little interview with a fantastic Scouser comedian who I've already had called Adam Rowe. And I might have lied about that. <laughs> because his mother's in, and a whole lot more. So don't go away, folks. Do I carry on? Yeah. Right. But first, we kick off with a musical act. Very excited. We, our first musical act is called The One-Legged Man Show. Seems a little bit extreme to cut your leg off just for a show title, but I've known people who've done worse. Oh, we've got some, we've got some latecomers. Are you the, uh, the pretty Irish lady <laughs> who's, yeah, your husband's already yeah, told me that you were coming in late. Hello, welcome. So let's welcome, oh, live TV, what can possibly go wrong? Let's please welcome our first guest to the stage. He's fantastic. He is Mr. Niels Bergstrand. Round of applause for Niels. Hello, 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 hello my darling. Oh, God. <laughs> a little, little bit of feedback from Niels there. Now, Niels Bergstrand, yes. where, where do you come from in I the come, world? Yes, I'm, I'm from Sweden. You're uh, from, from Sweden? Stockholm. Yeah, so hence my rather exotic and sometimes posh accent, actually. It's, it's very nice, isn't it? I, I feel we should be sitting closer <laughs> so I can uh, take full advantage of it. So, um, Niels, what, firstly, what happened um, to, to your leg? Does it, does it have a, sh a, a, a show of its own? It has like? a show of its own. So ten years ago, I went uh, on a, a holiday to celebrate New Year's Eve in Thailand, and I was shot as an innocent bystander. I was not doing the moonlight portrait and everything, anything like that. It was very family friendly. And, uh, but then they started a fight there, and I was wrong time, wrong, t like wrong place, wrong everything. And oh. unfortunately, the bullet hit me that badly. So after three weeks in Thailand and came home to Sweden, and then they had to amputate it. Oh my God, that's unbelievable. Yeah, it, it is actually. I mean, even though it's 10 years ago, every day I'm a bit like uh, surprised. Surprised that it, that it happened. <gasps> yeah. It's but it's funny. fantastic that you're, you're here to tell the tale and you're, you, you, know, yeah. you're, you haven't gone, oh no, you've uh, used it. Oh, of your... course. I mean, the thing is, it's like if, if I, uh, I mean, as an amputee, you have quite a lot of low moments, right? But if I let that win, 
the bad thing that happened to me win, then it's like, no, 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 no. I'm going to be better and bigger than that. So I celebrate myself 10 years now because mm. I was about to die on that beach in Thailand and oh. then at the hospital again. So this is my, I, this is my 10th anniversary in a way. So I celebrate, so this is a little present I think that deserves a round of applause, everyone. <laughs> Wonderful. So is that, that's the message you want the audience to take away from your show, is it? Yes, absolutely. The, the positivity. Yeah. And how did you uh, come up with the idea? Well, I or, mean, during the years after I lost my leg, I started to write songs about it, just in private, because I'm, I'm a professional musical theatre guy and stuff, and performing and stuff. But that's a bit of a therapy. And uh, then I said to myself, maybe I, I should actually do a show about this. Uh, so now I, I have a small break in my normal schedule, so I've taken it here to Edinburgh to do this, and I'm doing it in, in Scandinavia as well. And um, so that house came to be. And that, that, I mean, that, to be quite honest, it is a great story. Yes, <laughs> it is, to be quite is. honest. Yeah, it is like it's uh, everything is that. But, um, but then for myself, so maybe it's like a bit of self therapy, maybe. But, mm. um, uh, but a lot of people have said since you're performing, and the thing is, I mean, now Paralympics is coming up, right? And I'm so impressed by them, and really makes me proud of being yeah. an amputee sometimes and disabled. But there are not too many performers actually on stage, and sure. not musical theatre people. Uh, so uh, I want to show people that you can do anything. I hear you, you've been working with Benny Anderson yeah. from ABBA. Yeah. So tell us about yeah. that. That's Both amazing. Bjorn and Benny, I call them first name basis with them now. So Bjorn and Benny, <laughs> uh, we just finished working on. It's a, it's a massive, massive production. It's called Christina, which has actually been in a concert. I think that Susan Boyle had a massive hit with a, a song from it a few years ago. And uh, a big production in, in, in Sweden. And I've been working with them, and uh, I played the captain. So it's, it's about uh, Swedes going, as you had here and in Ireland and stuff, people at the end of 19th century going over to America to find their, like... And what, um, what makes you happy in life? Oh, OK, I'm going to be really cheesy now. But Just be as cheesy I as you want. I have the most beautiful, almost five-month daughter. And... Oh. Uh, her smile. I mean, <laughs> I know it is cheesy, and I, when, before when I've seen people say this, but it's like, when she starts to laugh or just give me that smile, okay, after all this poo and screaming and all that kind of thing, <laughs> then eventually you get that smile, and then it's like my... And what's uh, her name? Audrey. Audrey. Yes. So we have to say, hello, Audrey. Yes. Um, hello, Audrey. Oh, that's hello, so Audrey. sweet. What a beautiful name. Named after Audrey? Uh, Actually, you know Audrey. what? My wife and I, I mean, this is even more cheesy, we sat and saw uh, Downton Abbey, and then there was like an assistant to one of the daughters there who works at the, uh, has a, a, a paper, like newspaper, and her assistant's name is Audrey. Plus, the thing is, Audrey, I mean, Audrey Hepburn, Audrey Tattoo, and apparently Audrey in Coronation Street, or is it East Audrey Center? Roberts? Yeah. The one, that, the one that goes, oh, I do. Yeah, Ooh. that's apparently the reference <laughs> yes, most Audrey. people say. But, uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah. but it's good, actually, because it's pronounced ish the same in both English <laughs> and Swedish. Audrey, yes, and it's a beautiful name. So, before you perform, let's sell your show. Yes. Do the American thing. Come on, where is it? <laughs> you know, let's fill it out. Let's sell Absolutely. loads of tickets. So and you go for it. Yes, so, so you're more than welcome to come to my show. To come to my sh show, the One Legged Man show here on George Street in Spotlight Theatre, quarter past three every single day because my producer and wife tells me to be on stage then. So, and uh, I will take off my leg. When I fire, sometimes people say, well, you've got two legs, but then I actually do like this. Hold on for a second. To prove, sorry. So I do like this. Oh. <laughs> that is something, that's a party trick. So I'll do that and I'll take it off and I'll take it off and you'll see everything. And music and um, yeah, musical cabaret. Fantastic. And we're going to hear Nils uh, perform now. I'm very excited. You're going to give us a, a couple, of, couple of songs? Yes. Take it away, Nils Bergstrand. Round of applause, everyone. <laughs> So, the first song is a song uh, I wrote after being uh, in a hospital in Thailand for three, three weeks. So this is the therapeutic part of that, actually. And it goes something like this. So I'm lying in a hospital in Thailand And outside the palm trees wiggle in the wind And the nurses, they all look like 
white flight attendants and they dress my hair uh, no, and they giggle as they dress my open wound that smells like shit Ooh. to my right I have a pump with lots of morphine and it keeps me half sedated and quite drunk well this might sound to you like fun but it is not I can assure you and in those say you look George Clooney come and marry me just on holiday all my luggage in a cabin on an island far away oh my god that's really painful i think i'd like to end this now well i would jump just if i could but i'm tied down now to this bed and the feeling is anxiety what the fuck shall i do now i won't survive i won't survive say okay and press the button to the pump with all the morphine and the doctor says hang in there we we'll try again how the hell did i end up here i was just on holiday all my luggage in a cabin on an island far away oh my god that's really painful i think i'd like to end this now well i would jump just if i could but i'm tied down now to this bed and the feeling is Society, what the fuck shall I do now? I won't survive, I won't survive. So I pressed a button to the morphine, I press a button to the pump with all the morphine. Applause, everyone. That's all for part one and part two. You'll have some stand up with. Daniel Nils Roberts, and we'll be chatting to Adam Rowe, and there'll be lots more. So, see you off the break, folks. <laughs>